What's up guys? How's it going? Welcome replay viewers. Thanks for joining us. Hey, good book. What's happening guys? Thanks for jumping in. VMS Drummer, and what's up? This is a shot from my rooftop. That's Santa Monica Boulevard over there. Thanks for the heart. Appreciate it. Yo! Sun is just about to set and I thought I'd uh, shoot a quick video. I watched a couple periscopes today, which is really interesting. Hey guys, what's happening? For those of you who I haven't met yet, my name's Wei. Nice to meet you. Thanks for coming in and joining the Periscope. This is my, I think like my third Periscope I've done. And I've recently just started checking out more stuff on Periscope and trying to film some more stuff on Periscope. I'm going to try turning this sideways. Does that look any better? Yeah. And um, the reason I wanted to do this Periscope was for two reasons. Number one, um, this year, I made it a goal to film some more video lessons for my students. And what happens is, you, um, we go live at 9 p.m., so we got to get ready soon, but just want to jump in. Thanks. Okay, I'm going to make this quick then. This is only going to be like five minutes. What time is it now, guys? Yeah. So, um, I try to film these YouTube video lessons for my students, and it just takes more time, and you're filming it, and you're editing. Hey, what's up, Beetle Percussion? Thanks for joining, guys. Um, and... Once I've jumped on Periscope the last couple of days, I've been watching people, you know, they get on and they practice. And what I notice from a lot of young students who are practicing is they get on, they get their pad, and they're playing. But it looks like they're just playing stuff, okay? And I think a lot of young players, they do this. And I think a lot of professional players actually do this too, is before you start practicing, you don't have a clear idea of what you're practicing and how to go about practicing it. For those of you who are joining in the room right now and you know that the Gridbook series are on here, Gridbook series, a little bit of it that I've seen so far, and I want to get a copy and check it out. But it's been really cool to see a lot of high school students get the book and and talk about how, how much it's helped them practice. And I think, yeah, you're, it is a global like, epidemic. It's definitely an Instagram epidemic. But I think the reason, one of the reasons why it's so successful beyond the fact that it's a great product is that um, it's a framework for students to practice. It's a roadmap, right? It spells it out for you, like, do this, do this, do this, and do this. And when I watch people, thanks for the hearts, guys. I appreciate those of you who are tapping and making the, the hearts float up over here. Um, yeah, whoa, look at that. <laughs> Man, this is cool. Look at that. That's crazy. Thanks, guys. Keep them coming. That's great. Okay, so back to the point. The point of this is, um, for me, when I was a high school student first getting into marching percussion, one of the most important things... Uh, yeah, not playing structured practice, that's super important. And that's exactly what I want to talk about today, is one of the most powerful tools that my teacher taught me when I was in high school was 4 2, one And this is a framework to practice, and this is the thing, one of the things I think I used so much when I was trying to get into DCI and work on, um, you know, my marching band stuff, my drumline stuff. And 4 2 one those of you who know, how many of you, get, can you guys just like, write in the comments how many of you know who what 421 is yeah not 420 that's something different 421 uh, if you know what 421 is give me like a thumbs up if you don't know maybe do a question mark so that I know how to kind of proceed with this yeah you do who's that Pat the Knight yep me yep Luke 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 Pigman what's up man yep snail girl what's up thanks grid book yes okay so for those of you who don't know what 421 is it's basically just a format or framework for you to practice, okay? So let's, let's just, let me just give you guys an example. So if you're playing eights, for example, you could play eights for four beats. One and two and three and four and. I'll just call it reveals if I'm slicing or not. One and two and three and four and, right? And then you do your left hand, one and two and three and four and, okay? Those would be the fours. And then you're gonna do what we call the twos. So you play for two beats. One and two and switch to your left hand, one and two and. And then you're going to do the twos twice so that they add up to four. Okay, so the twos would look like this. One and two and, one and two and, one and two and, one and two and. Okay, so you do the twos twice and then you get to the ones. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two. And you do the ones four times to again total up to four. Okay, so it looks like this. Those of you who are just joining right now, we're talking about 421. 421 is just the way to practice. Okay, so you do the fours once, 
and then you do the twos twice, and then you do the ones four times. Instead of four, the twos twice, and then the ones four times. So everything equals up to be the same amount of time. Okay, so let's apply it to like the most basic exercise that everyone knows. Uh, eights. Okay, so four two hundred eights. I like to go four two one two four on loop to chop out. Yep, that's also great too because you're kind of pyramiding. Um, I had a snare tech once who had us do eight and twenty five, but they did eight and eight, eight and sixteen, eight and twenty four, and they actually went all the way up to eight and sixty four. So we pyramided up and then we pyramided back down. By the time you're you're done, you know your hands are dead. But that's how you build chops. Okay, so back to four two one eight. It looks like this. One two three four one. These are the fours. And then you do the twos twice, and then you do the ones four times. Bum, two, bum, 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 bum. So the whole thing looks like this. You can try this with me. If you want to do this on your phone, you can tap it on the screen, and more of these lovely hearts will float up. So it looks like this. One, two, here we go. One, two, three, four, one, two, twos twice. One, two, one, two, one, two. Ones, one, 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 one. Okay, so that's an example of eights. Um, what else can you use this with? How about bucks? So let's take bucks twos, for example. So a buck exercise looks like this. And typically you would just do it, you know, four times on each side. And then you're done, right? But in this case, if you want a four, two, one, that pattern, it would look like this. One, two, three, four. One, two. And then you do the twos. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, and then the ones. Now, as you're doing this, especially when you get to the ones, it reveals a lot of the rhythmic or height discrepancies that you might have uh, that you may not see when you're doing just the fours. For example, when I first started doing this, you can do this with bucks twos. Bucks threes would look like this. This is a beetle pad, beetle percussion. Now, when I was in high school, I would do all this with the metronome, which you should be doing also, right? And what I noticed was every time I got to the twos and the ones of my three buck patterns, these, and especially this, um, bop, 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 I would rush terribly, awful, so bad. And so when you do the twos and the ones, it reveals some weaknesses that you might not hear or see if you're just doing groups of four all the time, okay? Um, so we did buck twos, buck threes, and you can also do buck fours. Thanks for the hearts, guys. I appreciate it. And the twos. One, two. One, two. One. Yeah, everyone does rush the ones. I agree. So here are the ones. Okay, so 4 2 one -ing your buck patterns. That's a great exercise, too. You can also do this with, like, double beat, or your double... Um, one double beat exercise that I really like is called spring. I think it's an old... I think it originates from an old Phantom Regiment exercise, but it goes like this. Yum, ba bum 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 Two. Twos, right? Twice. And then you do the ones. And do the ones four times, right? So again, four two one. It's just a framework for you to practice in a structured manner, so that you ma you make sure that you're hitting everything that you need to in a pattern. Spring can be found on snare science for anyone looking. Excellent. Thanks for the uh, the uh, pro tip, Pat the Knight. Um, now I think I'll save this for a future lesson because the sun's coming down over here and I gotta get going. We call it Irish Spring. Yep, that's all another format. Um, is gritting. Uh, which I think that's a future lesson and you can check that out in another book. Uh, I want to do this in a longer lesson, but earlier I was watching a periscope and someone was talking about uh, a 16th note grid and the student didn't know what a 16th note grid was. But I'll just do a, a brief preview of this. So for those of you who do know 16th note grid, right, that's the pattern. You do four of each one. How would you apply this to a 4 two, one the twos, you do two of each one, so da da. You do it twice, right? So you repeat it. 
And then the ones, you get this cool little like funky uh, accent pattern. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. Because you're only doing one accent pattern of each one. And you do it four times. So it gets like a little bit of a groove going, right? Now the cool thing about that is, uh, for 16th note grade, there's all these variations you can do. You can do them forwards, you can do them off the right hand, off the left hand, you can do them backwards, backwards, off the left. And then when you play this with a friend, if you're playing the accent pattern forward and your friend's playing the accent pattern backwards, you create this hocketed, um, cool, like, counterplay, contrapuntal rhythmic pattern between the two parts. Like I said, that's a much longer lesson. Um, but right now what I just wanted to talk about was 4 two, one being a framework for you to practice. I just followed you on Instagram, fam. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Did you? Sorry, I didn't see that. Did you write the word snare drum? Oh, yes, I did. Um, who just wrote that? If you could just type that in again so I can see who wrote that comment. Um, what they're talking about is a blog post that I wrote last month. Me, percussive, at percussive. I need to check you out. I don't know who you are, but thanks for that comment. Um, last month, I wrote a blog post called The Worst Snare Drummer I've Ever Seen. Now, before you send me a bunch of hate mail and say, like, man, that guy's a total jerk for writing a blog post, you have to read the blog post, and there's actually a very positive message behind it. You can find it on my website, which is weiyuanpan.com. It's my name, H-U-E-I-Y-U-A-N-P-A-N.com. Thanks again for the hearts, guys. I, I appreciate that as you're, as you're doing that, for those of you who are tapping. Um, oh, look, there you go. Great. And don't forget to follow. You can find me in a couple different places. Whoa, look at that. <laughs> Make it rain! I, I appreciate it. This is very nice, guys. This is so cool. Like I said, this is like my third periscope, and I think this is going to be a very powerful medium, especially as we do these lessons. Hey, what's up, guys? Beetle Percussion, you guys are the first one every time. I love you guys. Seriously. This is how much I love you guys. Check it out. Um, I just want to jump back on real quick because my phone died, and I just want to let you know what happened. Hello, Jack St. Louis. Yeah, I know. It, it happens, right, Bradley? So, um, but I just want to jump back on and just wrap up the final thoughts, which is 421, framework to practice. I'm going to start doing these, I think, on a weekly basis. It'll force me to post regularly, and I think there's a lot of information that I could help people with. Thanks, Jack, for sharing on Twitter. And the last thing I just want to say, because I'm going to jump over on the Gridbook series uh, lesson that's going on right now, is that on my website, I'm going to start posting some show notes each time I do a lesson, and... Hello, it's me and Beetle. Right. That's okay. Three is perfect. Um, on my website, I'm going to start posting some show notes for these lessons so that if there's some extra resources that I'm going to put on. There's nothing on there yet. There is a page, but it says, uh, it's my website, Wei Yuan Pan, which is my name, H-U-E-I-Y-U-A-N-P-A-N dot com slash periscope slash lesson one. Okay, and like I said, if you go there right now, uh, there won't be anything on the page, but later I'll post a little thing about what 4 2 one means and how it goes. Thanks for the hearts, by the way. I really appreciate you guys um, bringing those hearts on. Um, I'll post some notes on there so that uh, if you have questions or if it's a printed resource... I know that sometimes some of us are visual learners, so if you get that sheet of paper and you can see it on paper and it's written out for you, sometimes that's easier to, to read. But I think what's going to be cool about this Periscope format is that when you uh, come on, you guys can ask me questions directly. So, um, are there any quick questions before? Because I think some of us are just joining. Maybe I'll just play a couple things real quick. Four, two, one. Uh, box pattern. This, let me just close with this then. This will be good. Four, two, oneing. My favorite thing to do. Four, two, one. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks. Uh, four, two, oneing. Box patterns is probably the first thing I would start with. So start by four, two, oneing your box twos. twos, second time, and then the ones. I'm going to scoot this down a bit so you can see this beautiful practice pad that I'm playing on right now. And then you can 4-2-1 the threes, so they look like this. Can you also do it backwards? Yes. You can go 1-2-4. And then the ones. And then the last thing uh, would be bucks fours. Four, two, one, those. Twos. And then the ones. 
Thanks for the hearts, Jack. Okay, so check that out, 421. Check out the resource on the page, which is Pan slash periscope slash lesson number, which would be lesson one. Yes. And um, also check out Instagram, which is where I've been living for the last couple months. I'm going to spend the next couple months living on Periscope and checking this world out also. Uh, on Wednesday, I'm meeting up with Carl Drumtech. Uh, if you don't follow him on Instagram, you should check him out also, Carl Drumtech. And we're going to do a little hang session and pad session on Wednesday evening also. So maybe check back in on Wednesday night. And uh, right now, if you haven't already done so, you should follow at Gridbook Series, which is where I'm heading now next to watch their show. They're doing a lesson on hand-to-hand -hand evenness, and this would be a great tag on to that lesson. Okay? All right. Thanks for watching again, replay viewers. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the hearts. Appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you guys later. Bye.